Now let's build out our activity feed so we can see our individual notifications. So first, we're going to work with our activity feed item class that's going to enable us to deserialize our data, something that we're quite familiar with, to deserialize each activity feed item that we're getting from our get activity feed request. So we're going to use the activity feed item class both as a model and a widget. So let's declare all of the values, all the properties that we're going to have for an instance of an activity feed item. If we look at our feed, we see a feed item. We see the fields comment data, media URL, post ID, timestamp, type, user ID, user profile image, and username. So we're going to have all of these variables declared and passed to our constructor. So we'll have Again, the majority of them as strings. So we're first going to have username and user ID. And I'll paste this in six more times. After this, we'll have type. So the types that we'll have are like, follow, and comment. Then media URL, post ID, user profile image comment data, and then a final timestamp value, timestamp. And we'll pass these to the activity feed item constructor by copying all of this and using our multiple cursor trick. Then we'll make our factory activity feed item dot from document. We'll have a document that will turn into an instance of activity feed item where username will be doc username user ID doc user ID type doc type post ID doc post ID user profile image doc user profile image comment data doc comment data and timestamp doc timestamp Now, the next step, if we look at our final version, we see that for the like and comment notifications, we want to have a preview of the image. So we'll have this media preview on the right hand side. So here we're going to check within a function which we'll call configure media preview. We'll check within this function if the type of our notification is either like or comment, in which case we're going to set a variable called media preview to a widget that will display our preview image. So let's declare this variable above our activity feed item class. So we'll have a media preview that's type widget. So media preview will in this case be set to a gesture detector because when we tap on this we eventually want the ability to see a full-sized version of our post so for now because we don't have that function we'll just print showing post then for the child we'll have a container where the height will be 50 width 50. Then we'll use as its child an aspect ratio widget where the aspect ratio is going to be 16 by 9. For its child, we'll have a container where decoration 
we set to box decoration. This is how we're going to display our image on an image argument set to decoration image where fit will be box fit dot cover and then image will use our cache network image provider set to media URL. And otherwise, if this condition is not met and assuming we just have a type of follow, we're going to set media preview to a text widget with an empty string. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to have a summary of each notification. So to store that, we'll create another variable above our class that'll be a string called activity item text. And we want to add another conditional to conditionally set this value. So if type is like, and this will be within our configure media preview function, if type is like activity item text will be set to liked your post. We'll prepend the user's name before this text. Else if type is follow, activity item text will be is following you. Else if type is comment, then we want to use the comment data. So we'll say replied colon and then interpolate the comment from comment data. Otherwise, if we have a condition that doesn't match for whatever reason, we'll just say activity item text is set to error unknown type and then we'll interpolate that value. So now to put these two values together to create our individual item, list item, we'll head down to our build function. And first we need to execute configure media preview. And we'll return from build a padding widget. We'll set padding on the bottom to separate each notification from one another. We'll set that to 2.0. The child will be a container where its color is going to be colors.white54 to give it a 54% opacity. And the child will be a list tile. The title as a gesture detector where it's on tap is going to be used to show a user's profile to go to their profile and we click on their name for its child we're going to use a special text widget called rich text and the reason for this is we want to style our text differently within a single text widget and we can't do that with just a normal text widget so a rich text widget will take in a text span a widget known as a text span which we can use to format our text differently. So you'll see what I mean in just a bit, but if we look at our example, we see that our username is bold, whereas the rest of our text is not. So first of all, we want to set overflow to text overflow dot ellipsis to make sure we clip any text that might go beyond the length of this list tile. Then the text parameter is going to be set to text span. The style will be set to text style, where the font size will be 14.0, colors, color is colors.black. So this text style is being applied to all of the children of this text span. And for the children, we're going to have first a text span which contains the text username and this is what we're going to make bold so we can set some further style attributes with another text style and we're going to make it bold with font weight bold and then for the next text span 
will provide the text which will include a space and then we'll interpolate the activity item text and we're not going to add any other rules or attributes more than the ones that we set up here so now after our list tile title we'll add a leading of a circle avatar or the background image will be wrapped in our cache network image provider we'll set its URL value to user profile image then we're gonna have a subtitle set to a text widget where we're going to include our timestamp so once again we'll use the time ago package so we'll import this from say comments where we aliased it as time ago we'll head back to activity feed add that up at the top and to format it we'll say time ago dot format and pass in timestamp dot to date and then if this overflows for whatever reason we can add text overflow dot ellipsis and finally for the trailing we'll have our media preview and now we can display our activity feed items by heading back up to get activity feed and instead of printing the result of iterating over snapshot.documents we're going to create a list of type activity feed item called feed items it'll be an empty array we'll still iterate over it but instead we're going to take each document deserialize it with activity feed item dot from document and then pass that result to feed items with feed items dot add and then instead of returning snapshot.documents we'll return feed items and then within our future builder instead of returning the text widget we'll return a list view where its children will be snapshot dot data in other words the feed items that we're returning here so now we can save and if we look at activity feed it looks like I made an error with the cached network image provider forgot to add media URL to our created activity feed item instance when we deserialize it so we need to provide that value so when we do in our activity feed we see our first item a notification for a new comment we see our preview on the right hand side we see our user information on the left and finally we can improve the appearance of this by heading to our scaffold that we're returning from activity feed state and we can set the background color to whatever color we like I'll set it I'll set mine to colors dot orange so now whenever a user likes comments or follows us we'll get this notification in our activity feed